See if we go live like this. All right. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up. Shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers, Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to military personnel. Shout out to law enforcement personnel. Shout out to medical field personnel. Shout out to every single person getting up this morning and going out to get your daily bread. Make an honest living. Big up yourself. Shout out to the people who wish for others as much as you would wish for yourself. You're a good person. You deserve some respect, right? Manners and respect to everybody tuning in this morning. And thank you for being here. King Biggs, Mon and Fam, big up yourself. Seymour, thank you for being the first one in this morning. Asarin Odetta, I appreciate you to the fullest. Thank you for being here. Mervin the Point, Jamaica Kerr, big up yourself, Sean Cassell. Donna Davis is in the building this morning. Lowered Street Culture is in the building this morning. Thank you for being here, family. Audrey Wright's here. Lil Red Gucci, too. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Onika St. John Jones, Senior Sexy. Sharon Spence, Debbie Jervis is in the building. Marilyn Grant, Sister Brummel Wright's here this morning. Lauren Lawrence is here. BM, Darlene Walter Riley, Kaz Robinson, Blessings Fam. And thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Rosalind Smichael, Jane Ander, Wayne Nathan is in the building. Karen Notice says, good morning, SoFlo and family. Up, 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 like it says on the T-shirt. Up, up, up. That means wake up, wise up, and rise up. We're going to have some interesting conversation this morning. I wasn't going to do a morning live, but I couldn't help myself, right? So here we go. All right. We have a couple of topics to talk about this morning. Black Goddess Henry, Julie Tapper, Sharon Ingram, Brickhouse, Unstoppable Joss, Stacey Ann Williams. Shay, thank you for being here this morning, family. I wish I was just saying I make up again. I don't know. Wife well, make the tea this morning. I think it's, she said fever grass and ginger. Yes, I'm going to sip some fever grass and ginger this morning. Health is wealth. Went to the gym, got me a little workout in the morning. Yeah, Did a hell of a workout. I feel tired. And we need to go take a shower. But... TMI, TMI. Oh, first out the gate. Today, a prince was born, and today this prince is a young king. And I'm looking back, and I decided to share this one photograph with you this morning as I say happy birthday to my oldest. That's Tafari. That's the tall one right there. It doesn't look like that no more. None of them look like this anymore. That's to show you how time is flying by. This was a beach day for us right? Out chilling with the babies. That's Kosi, the little red one. That's up. Kosi is now 14. Um, No, Kosi is now 15. And Jaden, the little one in the middle, who was always the smallest. If you look on Jay, right? Jay, we used to say Jaden is going to get his mom's height because all the boys them grow up to be, all three of them now are all over six feet. Everybody foot size 13, this I want you, him, he wears size 16 and a half in men's shoes. Time is flying, my friend. Time is flying. You say daddy with my big smile doing my daddy thing. But today is Tafari's birthday. So I say happy birthday to my prince. This is my wealth. When people ask me, Toflo, you're rich. Me, I just like Bob Marley. Me rich, but me not rich in a, the money thing where I talk about and material possessions. I'm rich. Like this rich. Then I got tired facing my face. Yeah, man. So see it there. So big up to my prince. It's his birthday. Happy birthday to Farai. You don't know. I tell you in person. Me not have to tell you yes, but I want it to be shared. Right? Daddy loves you. And I'm here for you and all that. And him know all that already. So I feel weird even I say it yes. So with that said, help me wish my prince a happy birthday. All right. May I try to lead by example, you know? So any man will follow my thing, no say, we pick them come first, right? We don't do the absentee, that is something. Be there in their lives, no excuses. You know, I hear about no baby mother is holding me back. I mean, I hear about none of that. Even though I know 
things get difficult sometimes, especially with some of them baby mother yeah, and exes and all these things. But work your way through the complications because they don't stay small for long. Everybody in this picture is big as hell now. Everybody in this picture is over six feet tall now. Big man them, right? So happy birthday, for I, and I'll hook up later. And you know how that go already. See? All right. With that said, I saw a very interesting interview yesterday. I don't know if y'all saw it on the Gleaner. Shout out to the Gleaner. They did an interview with a Jamaican woman who was a drug mule. And she got caught in the U.S. I'm going to use some of this for conversation's sake only. Um, let me put my disclaimer out. This is not my material. I'm getting it from the Gleaner because sometimes you use them stuff, you know, and them strike your channel and these kind of things. I don't want them strike my channel. I just have something to say, right? But <laughs> I watched her interview and I encourage all of you to go watch this interview. See more. You said it already. So you already know we are on the same page, but I have so much more to say. See, I forgot to hit the like button. Family, hit the like button as you come in. Debbie Jervis, stop yourself. So we're going to talk about this woman a little bit um, as I pull up her interview for us to go through. And then there's a British grandmother who is awaiting a firing squad uh, because she smuggled some drugs and crossed Indonesia's way. In Indonesia, they don't play. They execute, right? And death penalty is a part of the punishment for drug offenses. Well, she's waiting her execution. I'll tell you what, this is real because I was following another person a couple of years ago and they executed the person. And I think the person was either from America or the person was from the UK, one of them. So it's not like they're bluffing. They don't bluff. And you should hear how it's done when they do it. So we're going to talk about her case because I saw comments from people that I know are of the Jamaican and the Caribbean diaspora, and they are very sympathetic with this lady, you know? It's like we have a thing for others when they do something. Oh, they should be forgiven. No, man, that is so wrong. I understand she make a mistake. But if it's one of our own, yes, him for dead, firing squad, and that him forget. The whole of them, them make we look so... <laughs> We're very interesting dynamics of how the case, are be, the case is being treated compared to how we treat our own when it's them in at the same seat. Robot dogs to start patrolling 2023 June. Somebody said yesterday, so flow, this is the topic you should start out with this morning. So the angle of, there's a politician that said she's not in favor of these robot dogs and robots patrolling the streets and helping police to fight crime because these things are going to end up in communities where majority of the population there is black and uh, brown or minorities as we are called and this is going to get very ugly quickly so me and some people was going back and forth yesterday and i said that's not what the mayor said the dogs are going to be let go in new york but in a certain area and the politician is talking about black and brown so people are saying, so slow, you must be slow. Or are you just pretending to be slow? Because you know damn well that they're soon going to be letting them go, concentrating them in our areas. And we're going to talk about what could possibly happen and all these other things. I don't know if you're ready for that, but the future is here. <laughs> all right. Winston Bello Bell has passed away. Died on his birthday. You know, I always say... Uh, Every man has their day, man, woman, child. Every human has their appointment with death, right? And it is what you do in the time from your born to the time that you die or pass away. It's what you do in this space that counts. See, Winston Bello Bell gave me lots of laughs throughout the years and is definitely one of those people from our culture that I know, remember, and saddened because it has come to that time in his lifeline, right? So we're going to heal up Winston Bellobell and say a little bit about him in a minute. 
pay our homage and our respect to another great one that has gone on to the realms of the ancestors. And then we see one big report that says that Jamaica is now ranked in the top 10 of the most criminal countries in the world. But okay, I know we are alone. So shout out to my Trini family because you all you all you on the list too, right? Where is that one? I don't know. But all my Trini, <laughs> Trinidad is on the list too. And big up Guyana because Uno they on the list too. I don't know how they came to this, but Trinidad, Guyana, and Jamaica are in the top 10 of the most criminal countries in the world. We laugh at serious things. We laugh to keep from crying. And we say, we take serious thing, make joke. So I mean, I want to hear nobody. I say, why are you are laugh about some serious things on uh, because of us? So we do it. Cultural thing, right? Doesn't mean that it's not serious to us. It just means say, boy, I may have to laugh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I may have to laugh. So those are the topics for this morning, and we're gonna get into them. My grandmother would have said sooner or later, every man of a row him one boat. Yes, yes. And sooner or later, every man will have to answer for his own deeds. Stand on your own. I saw you go. I'm surprised that Guyana is on that list too. Onika St. John Jones. Um, when somebody sent it to me yesterday, I said, So Flo, look at this. I'm gonna look it up. And when I looked at the top 10, I was like, damn, this not look good for me. But then I saw Trinidad <laughs> on, on the top 10 too. And I was like, rotted, okay, we're not alone. And then I saw Guyana, and I was like, what's going on in Guyana? We don't know. Some of Guyanese people, tell me why I go on to Guyana, please, because I thought Guyana was one of those places that was cool, calm, and collected. Trinidad, we know said Trinidad, God, Trinidad, we call it, we know said Trinidad was acting up, right? But I didn't know that they were doing so much that they would make the top 10 of the most criminal countries. I wonder if them factor in politician corruption in this because i'm trying to figure out how guyana and how trinidad got on the list personally i could probably think of more worse countries as far as crime goes than trinidad some of you wonder where trinidad do panel list right so we will talk about those this morning we take serious thing and make joke that's just us yes erica and you know sometimes people don't understand the culture so they actually do come at us in a different way like why are you laughing at something that is so serious? I've been asked that many a times. It's a cultural thing, all right? Big up to those who are outside of the Caribbean culture who really don't understand. People like me and others, it is our duty to spread our culture, our beautiful, vibrant culture to the rest of the world. So if you don't understand something, just say so or, or say so, and then we will explain it to you. But our, our method... Of, of our madness and our madness have a method if you know what i mean but it's all always constructive see laughs keep you from going insane yes cinnamon to cinnamon and that's the reason why we are such a resilient people think of all we've been through right think of all we've been through they had the buck breaking farms buck breaking farms were like one of the worst places you would want to be sent to so when our brothers and sisters were being beaten and treated a certain way on these plantations say in the united states of america or what is now the u.s if they got those who they just could not control they could not break them i don't know if you saw the movie where kunta kept running away and they caught him and eventually they cut off one of his feet um you know them cut a foot so he couldn't run anymore and they the goal was to break him from saying his name was Kunta, which is his African name, which was aligned with his ancestry and everything else, and to make him accept the European Christian name, which is Toby. And they whooped him, and they said, say your name. And they whooped him, and he kept saying Kunta all the way until he almost died from the whoopings, where he eventually said, Toby, Toby, they beat him into submission, right? For him to give up his kunta. Th that's us. We're, th we're those same people. See? So they beat him into submission until he said, Toby. And we've laughed through all those. Slaves who were bad and they couldn't break and control them. They were put on ships and sent to certain Caribbean islands. Jamaica being probably the most prolific 
for the buck breaking farms and you know what would happen on the buck breaking farms i don't know if you could imagine this now today but to see a man be sexually assaulted in front of his woman and his children and for your children and your woman to watch you endure that like man ride you in front of your family just for sure them say you are nothing and a nobody that's like one of the worst place everybody wanted to be so apart from that i mean that's just us see so we laugh we laugh a lot to keep us our spirits up to to keep us looking on the good side of life because as bad as life is there's always some good in it right and we've always maintained that type of mind frame which has helped us to survive for generations and generations and generations so understand that part of us it's in our bloodline it's in our dna erica senior absolutely see now let's start off with this one um the jamaican drug mule i'm gonna leave that for a minute i think that lady is let's start off with winston bello bello i don't know if a lot of y'all know him if you saw classic movies like third world cup third world cup is where i really got to know him but in third world cup he i remember his specific line of back up back up we need back up for those of you who've seen third world cup it's a jamaican classic movie if you have never seen it before then put it on your list it's free on youtube these days so you can just go to youtube and type in third world cup jamaican movie and i promise you it'll be a very interesting watch those kind of movies paved the way for what we have now today right back up back up back up on the wharf when ninja man was in the movie and uh, ninja man step out and bust gunshot he was like police police and boom buckler and start beat gunshot after police them kind of movies from back then but that was uh bello i did not know you see when you stop following people because of their fame and you're not attached to their personal life you miss all the juicy details now Shout out to the Jamaica Loop News. So popular actor and comedian. I will show his face in a minute. Bello Bell. He was known for having been part of the comedic duo Bello and Blacker. Big up to Blacker. Blacker did a whole piece in the Jamaica Gleaner about Bello. You can go read that up for yourself. It's pretty long. So I chose to read the shorter one for you this morning. So for decades, Bello also served as a minister of religion. I didn't know that. I just thought he was a comedian. A brief statement on his Facebook page said that he died on Saturday from medical complications. Now, it is with deep sadness that we announce the passing of Bishop Winston Alexander Bell, who passed away March on April 15th of 2023 due to complications from neuropathy. That's what the post stated on his Facebook page. Now, neuropathy is a nerve problem that causes pain, numbness, tingling, swelling of muscles, weakness in different parts of the body. It usually gets worse over time after usually beginning in just the hands and the feet. Distal. You have proximal to distal. So it usually starts here, right? The hands and the feet. True story. I had a patient that I was working with in OT, occupational therapy. And he had come into rehab after having a car accident. And, you know, the whole time he just kept saying to me, like, God, um, God saved me because I couldn't feel my feet. And he was driving a big truck, a big country guy that was driving a big old open bed truck. And he said he was flying down doing about 50, 60 miles per hour. And he could not feel his feet. So he couldn't raise up off the gas and hit brakes. In his mind, he was feeling like, and that's how bad his neuropathy was. So that's something for us to look out for, poor circulation in the body. It's important to take care of your body as best as you can. But hear this, life is like this. And I tell everybody this, I don't ever say anything bad about people when they get sick because sickness is for all of us. I've seen the most healthy living kind of person still come down drastically sick. And they took all the precautions, never smoked, didn't even drink ever. You know, good people that eat clean and live healthy, exercise on a regular basis, all this other stuff. And they still got afflicted with all the stuff. And then I've seen people smoke and drink their whole lives. I got a lot of those in my family. 
and they end up living until they're like 90 something, 80 something years old. And then you have these others who, as soon as 40s hit, some even younger, right? You have all kinds of stuff out there that we as human beings are susceptible to because we're just humans and we're not in control of this. I don't give a, I don't care what people want to think. You're in control. No, you're not. You're, you're here at the mercy of the Almighty. Remember that. So neuropathy is one of those. You can look up more on that. It was a cause in his passing, according to his family, right? Bell's son, Jerome, also confirmed that his father's passing was on uh, that day. And he confirmed it Sunday on Facebook. He said, rest in peace, daddy, a.k.a. Winston Bello Bell, hashtag Pastor Bello. He wrote, he says, you were loved by many. You helped a lot lift their faith and drew them closer to God. Made a lot of people laugh with your duo, Owen Ellis, a.k.a. Blacker. Big up to Blacker again. It's another one of our legends in comedy. Rest well. You no longer have to live in pain or with any care for this world. Now, according to Bell's LinkedIn profile, he was a bishop slash general overseer of a church that's called Time Out for Jesus Worldwide Ministries. And he's been that since 1999. I didn't know that. Um, he also has been a producer and a presenter on Roots 96.1 FM for the past 24 years where he shared his ministry. I didn't know that either. A past student of Camperdown High School, he began his career in acting in 1981. And he has appeared in numerous films, Third World Cop, One Love, Glory to Gloriana, and The First Black Britons. He also made many theatrical um, appearances in many productions, such as Glass Slippers. His wife, Joy, who he got married to in 1995, she still, she predeceased him. His charity program is called The Joy Bell foundation he has a charity program and i heard that he fed a lot of people on a regular basis i also heard from blacker that he that's why i'm sending you to the gleaner to go read what blacker said it's a long article he spoke about him giving his life to the lord and he's a christian man of course and he you know he he um he never compromised his faith like he wouldn't take any role that would have him acting outside of something that he would have to come back and explain later on. He was that deep in what he did, right? And he was just one of those kind of people that gave his all to his people. His life was a, a life of servitude. So among them, Prime Minister Andrew Holness described Bell as an exceptionally talented actor and comedian. Many Jamaicans, including myself, have found memories of Winston Bell who played numerous standout roles, many eliciting rounds of belly laughter. Holness said, adding that he was truly saddened to hear of Bell's passing. That's the prime minister. May his family and friends and colleagues be strengthened during this time and may his soul rest in peace. Broadcaster, actor Rodney Campbell tweeted, Bello, my big brother, Blacker, Owen Ellis, just celebrated a birthday. Seems you waited for your longtime friend to see another year. So, his friend just celebrated his birthday and he passed away on his own birthday as well. Right? Full circle of life. With that said, there's a bunch of people out here expressing their, you know, their 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 sadness and they're paying their respects. And again, I did not know that he ran this church. I went and looked it up. It's a prominent church. It's one of those churches where you would see it. Remember, I'm going to Jamaica, go film, and I come back and I said, why, why are so many churches and some big elaborate church all over the place? They have more church than they have people to fill the churches. But I didn't know that he was living that kind of a life, right? Which is commendable. So that's him. Later years. This is most recent, right? And like I said, if you see him in Third World Cop, he's the chubby cop. He used to be chubby. He's not, he wasn't chubby anymore. He, he, was, he was the third World Cup that said, yeah, back up, back up, back up, don't go off. And it stuck with us forever, right? So, again, 
Our condolences goes out to his family, surviving family members, children and all. And it's that part of life, you know. It's the part of life that we know is coming for everybody, but it's still never easy when it comes, even though we know that it's coming. We have a lifetime to prepare for our passing and our loved ones passing, but when they pass, we still feel hurt because we'll never see them again in this lifetime. Nobody ever came back and said, hey, whew, I was over there for a couple of years. I'm glad I'm back. Let me tell you what happens over there. It's like they've gone into the unknown, right? And our religions comfort us and our family members comfort us with love and we comfort them and we go through it. It's a human experience. So my condolences to his family and you came, you saw, you conquered. You did your job, my brother. You served your people. You served your people well. It's a thing. It's a huge thing to be considered a king, not outside, to be considered a king amongst your own. And that he was. So with that said, we'll turn this page on life and it is what it is, right? May his soul rest in peace, like the prime minister said. So on with that. We go on now to this, uh, <laughs> the Jamaican drug mule one. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving that for a little bit. Uh, let's go on to British granny that's awaiting a firing squad in Indonesia. So there's a British grandmother that I learned of. Again, shout out to my audience because y'all send me stuff. And when I get to it, I get to it. But I also, if it's this interesting that I feel like, yeah, we got to talk about it. So this is one of those stories. Now, this British grandmother, if you look at the icon for this video this morning, that's her in the prison cell. I will probably pull up another picture of her that you can see her better. And we can talk about her and what she's going through. I'll say this. If any place you think of smuggling drugs, first of all, you shouldn't be smuggling drugs. There are so many other ways to make money, especially nowadays. But if... If you ever think, if somebody is blowing some hot smoke up your wazoo and you ever think that crossing through Indonesia with some drugs is a go and you might get away with it, I would beg you to think a hundred times over and just don't do it. Their punishments are harsh, especially for drug offenses, right? So this British grandmother awaits a firing squad after nearly a decade in a hellish Indonesian jail, is what the article says. So British grandmother Lindsay Samford, she has been held now for almost 10 years in a notorious Indonesian prison as she awaits execution by a firing squad. Her days are getting closer to her firing squad date. Samford has been incarcerated in Kerobokan prison in Bali since 2013 after being caught with $1.6 million worth of cocaine in her suitcase. What the? I'm willing to bet that she did this before because I don't know anybody that would try and just pack up $1.6 million worth of cocaine in your first go. So she probably did this before, got away with it. They say, yeah, she looks like the type where they don't really search. Send her again. Send her with more this time. And she probably got away with that. Okay, today is the big payday. 1.6 million pounds worth. Not 1.6 million dollars. 1.6 million British pounds worth of cocaine she was caught with. Right? So the jail in Bali has an infamous reputation for overcrowding. This is where she's been held with over 1,000 criminals that are crammed into a structure that is actually designed to fit only 357 people, grossly overcrowded. Several successful escapes have been done here, including people who have dug out holes under the ground of the prison and escaped that way. She said she, was, she witnessed some of these but she just couldn't be a part of the escape. I mean, where would she run? She is a white woman in Indonesia. It probably would be easy to find her. A similar incident occurring in 1999 when hundreds of convicts set their beds on fire, overpowered the guards, and through the flames and the smoke, a lot of them got away. That's what the place is known for. Now, these prisons are known to take bribes from people. 
And if your people can pay for it, you can even have the weekend off and they'll let you out and you go home for the weekend and you come back. This is allegedly, right? And, you know, they get their favorite stuff in there, drugs, whatever else they need in these kind of prisons. So Indonesia carried out executions infrequently with most prisoners waiting on their death row for more than 10 years, but they do execute. And when they execute, they execute in a large group. So 10 of us might be on death row waiting our sentence, waiting our day to go before the firing squad. When that, when that day comes, they'll just line up all 10. They don't wait and say, okay, your case needs to wait longer. So you're in for 15, he's in for 20, you did 10. Everybody goes in front of that firing squad. The last death penalty that was carried out here, though, was in 2015 at the location where she's at, not at other locations. There have been more recent firing squad activities, executions at other locations. But the one where she is, 2015 was the last time. The punishment in Indonesia is brutal, they call it, and the execution method is terrifying as they are led out. You're led from your cell out into an open area where a firing squad is waiting for you. Prisoners can choose to sit. This, these are your choices. Like in, in the U.S., if you're going to get executed, they ask you, what, what would your last meal be? Or are you a Christian? And do you want to see a chaplain? Or you are a pastor? Or, you know, if you're a Muslim, do you want to meet with an imam before you you're executed, that kind of stuff, right? So you get your last wishes. I've seen some crazy dishes that people have ordered. Some people order like a, a platter of everything they missed over the years. Some barbecued ribs and this and that and the other. Not in Indonesia. In Indonesia, when your day comes, you won't know. They'll just march you out. And you will know when that morning comes that today is the day for you. So prisoners can choose to sit or they can choose to stand. But you will be standing before armed soldiers who are trained to take shots at the heart. So they're all going to be firing at the same area. You got to understand that so some of them probably can't fire good. So they're probably going to be hitting you in your face and in other places. It's not a fun kind of death. <laughs> and people are starting to wonder, geez, is this like, does the punishment fit the crime? That's up to you to decide as the audience. My question to you is, does this punishment fit the crime? It said that if the prisoners survive after the firing squad is done firing, then the commander walks over and shoots the person in the head, ensuring that they're dead. That's how it's carried out. Now, it was as Sanford arrived in Bali from Bangkok, in Thailand, May 19th of 2012, she was arrested and they found a huge haul of cocaine in her luggage. The grandma insisted that she had been forced to carry the drugs by a criminal gang who had actually threatened her family and told her that they would kill her children if she did not comply. That is her story and she's sticking to it. Her legal team argued that she has been pressured into carrying the drugs and she had suffered with mental health problems so they took advantage of her that's what her legal but indonesia is not hearing it and the british government is not going to bat for her this plea fell on deaf ears and she was convicted although even the prosecution pleaded for her to be jailed for 15 years rather than for her to be executed well, the judge says, no, no jail for 15 years, execution for you. So she now awaits execution before a firing squad. And here she is. She's been there 10 years. She's going to be there until they execute her, I guess, or if she can get some kind of a pardon. Hopefully you are able to prepare for this. I doubt it. Firing squad sounds so inhumane. I hope they put a bag over their head. Mm. 
Okay, so this is my opinion of this, right? On one hand, I'm like, geez, she didn't kill anybody. And most people that use drugs, they do so willingly, even knowing the consequences of it, right? So it's not like she. this isn't the kind of crime where she was holding a gun to somebody's head, forcing them to do something. And quite honestly, if she wasn't shipping drugs to whoever was needing it, they would get it from someplace else, right? I'm not trying to justify what she did. I'm just saying they would get it from someplace else. So, I mean, that, that's a harsh punishment. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, fam. How you doing? I'm good this morning. Um, good, good. What? what I you, mean, about the granny? You miss her when you find out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's true what happened to her, she said, um, they threatened her with her life and her family, then that's sad. And this really just. Try to investigate more on the case and to see if that's true. That's the sad part. The they don't that, care. That's the sad yeah, part. Like she could that, probably that be telling the countries. truth. Yeah. They don't really business with that kind of thing. They're not like America who is going to take out the time to do ensure justice is really executed properly. Mm -hmm. They're not going to try to make sure there's no error of law. Do not care about that something there. I'm just one who say it look like you do it. We didn't say you do it. I didn't say you do it. That got prison. Yeah. And in her case, she's she to the way her at the story go, I think she did it. Maybe she didn't, but most likely she did willingly mm -hmm. do it. And if she did, then even if it's too harsh, mm -hmm. you shouldn't mess around in that kind of a country. Indonesia is a majority Muslim country. Mm -hmm. When you go to certain places like Indonesia, treat like a Saudi Arabia go. If you sneeze wrong, hmm. you go dead. Yeah. If them feel like say you insult them, God, you in you, you take off your clothes too much, you're not wearing enough clothes, you look pan somebody in the wrong way, you step on somebody. Their, pun time, their punishments are shot. harsh. Are harsh. They have some harsh punishments for simple yeah. things. Yeah. But you know what? They're, they're Sorry, but the, the part of the story now is this. I watch when our people do stuff. Like, for instance, when the police officer from Jamaica, that female police officer uh, that got caught at the airport in Fort Lauderdale, and she also had mm -hmm. the scamming charges. Okay, when she got caught, there were people that, that the same people that were saying, like, she fit dead a prisoner, hope MGR, death penalty, all this other stuff. But these are the same people that are over here now that are saying, why the punishment, they're too harsh. The punishment don't fit the crime and them shouldn't execute the lady like so why why we wish death for hours when them do the same thing because a lot of ours have been mean, caught doing the same thing them just not get kept exactly. in indonesia you know and i'm not even saying i'm not saying it's too i'm saying that's what people saying it's too harsh i'm not even saying it's too harsh i'm saying that when you walk into someone else's house and you do something that offends them gravely mm -hmm. You do not don't feel like say you can everybody measure. is the same. I got to get light the same. Right, you can't Some measure people, the punishment. Right, when you curse out certain people from like oh from like somewhere, somebody like why did you do that to me? And some people just knock you out. Right. So when you mess around, that's what happens. For Jamaica, we should be harsh, of course. For people who commit serious offenses, we should be harsh. Get more time execution for. Drug offenses. I, I, don't I don't think know. I don't think but I would work in, in sure. a country I like know. that though. Yeah. No, those, no. Those talk to me. Talk happen. to me. Would you want to live in a country like that? No, because in the countries that they can't even in in countries like Iran, they can't. You so flow couldn't kiss wife in public. Right. No PDA. They you call it. You couldn't hold her hand. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Right. So it's like the basics. You couldn't even do the basics. So it's like. Why even left your house? Why, you know, make no sense. So yes, it's harsh mm -hmm. and it's a very draconian. It's very, you know, oppressive. But that's how they have them freedom system. When you go over this so do as... walk like say, you have a dead if you put your foot in the wrong step. Mm -hmm. Just walk, punch out, don't slip, don't act a fool. Right, you absolutely. Know? 
So that's that. Yeah, the justice system is all dry, so the justice system is upside down. All right. But that's how it is. All right. So, all right, all right, let me give this other caller a, a chance. And thank you for calling yeah. in. I appreciate you. Yeah. All right. Other caller is gone. Yeah. He, he... <laughs> Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, fam. Speak up, Phil. You know. um, what, yeah. what do you think about this thing? Yeah? Oh, I wanted to talk about the robot then. Oh, you want to talk about the robot then? Yeah, I mean, this... <sighs> If, see it this morning all right so if if you call about a little later i'll still answer the phone or you can do that just like a like a few minutes come me, me the pandas granny that's about to be executed firing squad style in indonesia she's from great britain okay and them catch her over there with a good amount of cocaine so we are saying does the punishment fit the crime and would you want to exist in a country like that where the Punishment for, say, drug smuggling is a firing squad. That's that's what mm. we're there. But okay. you, if you're not going to be too long, you can say a piece about the robot still. All right, let me check back later. All right. Just a few minutes. Okay, I'm watching. All right, my brother. Thank you. All right. I didn't want to confuse up the topic then. Um, Crystal G says... They said that because she was a police officer who should uphold the law and not commit crime. Yeah, but still, with, with, with us as Jamaicans who saw, I think her name was Shelly Ann, right? Would we feel okay knowing that she came to the U.S., even though she was a police in Jamaica, she got caught at Fort Lauderdale Airport with some drugs. Would we feel good knowing that she got put before a firing squad in the U.S. and was executed? I wouldn't feel good. I wouldn't feel good. I wouldn't think, I would not think that the crime and the punishment match, right? Now, if she was a part of a syndicate that was kidnapping people, um, selling them into the human trafficking world for whatever, prostitution, body parts, whatever, then I would say yes, but I don't know. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Yo, SoFlo, big up. Big up. Manners and respect for him. How are you? I'm good, man. So, so listen, you see this woman, she's over there with the with the diet coke, yeah? Mm hmm She she I, I hear what you're saying about not not executing people, but listen, when you think you're over in someone else's country, they mostly take things more serious than we us in UK or you in the in the US. They, they, you know, you have to expect that, innit? Yeah, that's true. That's true. When you're in other people's house, you have to, you know, abide by their rules. That's true. And uh, do you know what? Yeah, people from these Western countries, mm -hmm. they, they take things lightly. They think, oh, because you can't get nothing over here, and the the UK government will save them. Mm -hmm. No, it's not going to work like that. Yeah, because I'm reading that the UK government's not even coming to her aid. They're, they're they're not they have nothing to say about it. They're not speaking up on her behalf. Nothing. You know, I've seen American yes, yes. I've seen American citizens go over there and get caught up, and the US government spoke up for them, and some of them got released. Even though they were facing yeah, yeah even though they were facing execution, they got released. I don't know what kind of deals they worked out behind the scenes. But they got released. So America went to back for some of its people and got them out of that situation. And I would think that the UK would also. But it says that the UK government has nothing to say about her situation. You know what? A lot of the times it's also what you can do for the country and what it, what your situation can do for the country. Mm, politics. And she must really, there's nothing for the UK to even worry about. So it's one of them ones where she's just got to deal with it now and... and, and with the consequences mm. but do you think that that punishment fit that crime i mean we know that yes, that's their rules I, we know that that's their rules but past that part i guess this is a personal question like on you personally do you feel like that punishment right. fit that crime all right i tell you i tell you why i do right because mm -hmm. to me drugs it, it damages so many people on a wider scale and 
you know you know what you're doing. You're doing it for greed. You're doing it for whatever reason. And so you just got to take it. I do. I think that people should have to get some serious consequences for 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 um, their actions because it will stop other people from doing it. Hmm. Yeah. It won't stop everyone, but, but it, was... it will stop people. Yeah. It will it will make a mark on some people, and they'll think, oh, you know what? Better not. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a deterrent, boy. Because if I was trying to do anything like that, that's one place where I would definitely mark off my list, knowing that that's what the consequences are. So yeah, it's a hell of a deterrent. So uh, and that's it. Why? I, I I don't I don't feel bad for her to be honest. You don't feel bad for her? No, 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 no. Because listen, there's things that I could be doing right now. But I know, I know there's consequences. Right, right. Even if I don't know what the consequences are, still you shouldn't be doing it. Just, just, just go about your look. If she was a police officer or whatever she was, she should have just got on with that and made her money that way. Yeah. Well, I thank you for sharing your opinion on that. I appreciate so, so, it. I wanted to ask you a quick question. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Um, about it's more about business. How do I, do I contact you about business? Oh, TV at gmail.com. And just put business in the headline. Okay, all right. Because I did send you an email before, but I'll, I'll, I'll send you the next one. Yeah, put business in the headline. That way it hits my attention as soon as I open it up. All right, bless, fam. All right, fam, bless. Bless. All right, live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Morning, so flow. Morning, fam. What's going on? All is well. All right, man. Uh, yes, brethren. All is well. All Blessed right. morning for the Monday morning. I want to keep it short and spicy. All right. Listen, me. It is not about if she she stick the punishment. Mm. Rules, regulation, and principle. If that is my rule in my country, that is the rule in my country. You have to take a terrorist to run a terrorist country. Let me tell you something. If they do that in Jamaica, mm -hmm. once you get caught any crack, opium, ecstasy, man, once you get caught with a gun and I can prove it is you, mm -hmm. death penalty. No trial, <coughs> death penalty. Death Rapist, penalty. death penalty. Kidnapping, death penalty. You have to have a terrorist to run a terrorist country. And this is the way you control your country and control the people and make sure your people, your citizens see it, brother. Hmm. This is the rules in the country. So, hey, you know what you're up against. You see what I mean? And yeah. that is it. True. Damn. All right, my brother. Thank you for sharing. Jeez. So people are harsh with mummy. They're saying that that's the rules of the country and you got to live with that. Now, here's the thing. I can't even say anything because she knew before she went there that those were the rules. You know what I mean? I, you can't walk down the street and me I tell her, say, yo, dog, I bite up people down the side, you know, and you just walk down there anyways. You never hear me tell her, say, dog, they bite up. And then you get bite up down there and you're like, Jesus, God, the dog, they bite me up. Well, you were warned. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning, Sophia. Good morning, fam. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing really well, thank you. Awesome. Talk to us now. What 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 you what are your thoughts on this? Well, my my opinion my opinion on um the lady getting um the firing squad. The firing um, squad. I, I think I, I, I think basically they're doing the right thing. You think they're doing it's the right nice. thing too? Yeah, because that's the rule of the country. So you should have you should have researched before you went and done the crime. I'm sure she knew. I'm sure she. And knew. plus, she was a police officer. I think even more so, they need to uphold uphold whatever the sentence was because they need to show that not even police officers are invincible. So you think they're going to make an example out of her based on that as well? Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Shout out to the people going out to work and coming in from work. That's why I say that every morning because, boy, the alternatives to getting to this money 
um, crossing borders and breaking laws, then you end up in front of a firing squad. You know, I would much rather be working. Give me Burger King exactly. and then Walmart and all that other stuff. All right. Thank you for sharing your opinion, fam. I thank appreciate you. So you. All right. Have a wonderful day. All right. You too. All right. Bye bye. Bye. John Noah. Nobody not says CFR yet, you know. <laughs> Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Morning, I'm so sure. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm calling up about this case with the lady. Mm -hmm. I um don't think the punishment fits the crime. One person. Because he um it's it's just drugs. I know it's dangerous and it's fair for. But in these countries, countries like the Indian countries, they're married little girls that I call babies. You know, they're marrying just little girls and doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I mean. So what problem? What is the problem with this lady? And then again, too, she shouldn't do it still because um, I don't understand how like a young kid do it. As a grown up, thinking, really thinking about this country, I wouldn't go there. I myself wouldn't go there even if I was a drug trafficker because I would look into the laws and say, you know what? Not in the criteria and stuff, but I don't really think the punishment fit the crime, right. even for a country like that who marry and rapes little children. And that's all. Oh, and the robots. One little thing on the robots. Same. Me in a New York, no problem. You stay through my window up on the rooftop them and stone them. <laughs> the robot them? Yeah, yeah stone them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all, all right. right. All right. <laughs> that's my piece. Yeah. All, all right. Make up yourself. See that she would stay up on the rooftop and try our window and stone them. <laughs> okay. Listen, we're gonna transition into another topic, but I, I um Crystal G. I found it very interesting because I'm saying that to myself too. How come none of the British callers are sympathetic towards her? I would think that they would be like, you know, feel some kind of patriotism like, yo, that's a granny from like our country. That's one of ours. I mean, she did a crime, but don't kill her. She didn't kill anybody, but that's not how they see it. They see it like, like one caller said, drug dealing tears up communities, destroys families, and she was a part of that circle. So in essence, she was killing people too. So her time has come, so she just got to deal with it. That's cold. That's cold. That's cold. That's the part that bothers me, Audrey Wright, that part. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Listen, SoFlo, me and, and SoFlo, do, yes. you, do you notice that in most of these countries, you have less mental It's because of the, the holding down and these drugs in the community. In China, in the Philippines, in Indonesia, you understand? Their population is big. Mm -hmm. So this is why, you see, in Indonesia, these people live on the water, SoFlo. Mm -hmm. I used to work on a cruise ship. And I used to be a chef on a cruise ship with these people on the ship, so float. These people work out two or three years on the ship before they go home. Mm. Because, I think, yeah, you understand me? So, so if you notice, they're less, they don't have too many mental people there because of the jobs. They try to let no jobs in their country. So if you look, look in Jamaica, look what my man has in Jamaica. Look in New York. Look all over other states down in America. How many, how many people did these jobs myself? Hmm. Death penalty so far. You, you agree with the death penalty for her too? Yeah. All right. All right, family. Thank you for sharing. So, man, yo, she ain't getting much sympathy. Um, I just wanted to raise awareness, let people know that she's out there. And if I can't write somebody or voice their opinion in some way, in some kind of something, whatever is going on, then, I mean, be a voice and do so. But I'm not finding much sympathy for her. You still there, Carla? Yes, I'm here still. Okay. You have anything else for me? You want to talk about the the robots in New York? Then I never, 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 never see the robot thing in so I don't, I don't get to it yet, now, so I can't comment on it as yet. Okay, so I, I appreciate that. that. I appreciate that. All right, family. Well, right. have a wonderful day. Yes. Bless up. Bless up. Yep. Ja ja. <laughs> Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Thank you for calling back. Hello, SoFlo. Yes, good morning, fam. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. I'm from the UK, Serena, and you know, you like with the topic here about the lady, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things, yeah, like 
it don't fit the crime still, but like even if it don't fit the crime, certain things you can't really say because you know say how the UK run. Sometimes you have to be careful what you say. Because oh. if you say certain things, then you can get in, you understand, you can get in suit on certain things. No. So you have a lot of people. Uh, no, keep going, keep going. Yeah, so sometimes it's like, sometimes people like, me know a lot of people listening here, yeah, mm-hmm. and like, they want to like, tap in a car, but they must say, boy, they're afraid to talk because you know how the system is here. If you say certain things, people like, you can get sued on certain things. You know how the system run up here. Right. So sometimes people have, sometimes people up here have an opinion, but they're afraid to say certain things. Because nobody from the UK said um, she deserves, nobody says uh, spare her or save her, which I find kind of weird, you know? No, a lot of people, a lot of people, yeah, because obviously we finish work here, and a like, lot of people like, will say, like, she needs to save, but you know how the system say like I'm from Jamaica, so I don't really care like if I say saving her, but a lot of people like them scared to say that. To say save you know, her. Call her life and thing. Yeah, to save her. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know if I, I don't want to be that oppressed. That I, I could give my opinion if she should be saved or not. But yeah, yeah. You, you know what bothers me though about her case is the fact that she she and her legal team is saying that she was forced to do it under threat that there would be violence brought towards her children. And I mean, they didn't even look into that. Yeah, but the problem is so far if you double check it on the first she go there. That's and the first she go there, she been, she been there for like, she for been, one period, she been there for like over, over six months. Yes. So it's not like a first time. Right, right. So she been back and forth there. So that is a problem. She been back and forth. It's not like she is the first time. So that's what they look into, and then she's police. They understand ex police. So that's 1. why they look into million pounds worth of drugs is a lot of coke. Yeah, but with the with the government now, with the government now, they're not gonna help because this government you like is different. The, mm. the so that's how it is there. Yeah. Damn. Do you think the crime fit the punishment though? Well, in a in a sense, like I can't I can't really judge so far because she been there, she going there before, so I can't really say yes or no because it's a long time they have eyes, you understand? Right. It's a long time they have eyes on her because she been going back and forth. Yeah. So I would say they should give her like maybe life in prison without a possibility like living at certain it's good for killing like that's a bit you know a bit hard after she feeling that pain. But it's the rules that the last we can we just one man can't really say anything. All right. Okay then so All far. Right. Thank you for sharing, fam. Right. All right, I appreciate okay, that. Then. All right. So let me say this, right? If if, if you're gonna okay. give me if if you're gonna give me life in Indonesian prison without the possibility of parole, um fire and squad me, please. Yeah. Express too. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Morning, SoFlo. How you doing, buddy? Good morning, fam. You good? Yeah, mama, day, mama, day. You know, me meet mommy yesterday, though. Yeah, I know. She called me and told me. Okay. <laughs> Your mother's <laughs> sweet, man. Yeah, man. She's a nice lady. I'm a G. That's I'm a Jenna, that man. All right. See you. See you. Where are we this morning? Wait, I'm calling about this poor lady. Mm-hmm. People are so messed up when it's not their own family. If it was somebody that was inside their family and it was and they that charge come upon them like that, everybody would I want people to feel bad for them. I have looked a mercy upon them. And Talk I'm truth. hearing everybody's just kind of like throwing her under the bus more. Talk truth. Like, that's, that's kind of messed up because guess what? If I your auntie, we do that. And you know your auntie a sweet person and yes, money I run and she buying you all these things and taking care of your situations and she get hemmed up, you're going to feel bad for her. True. It's, like, oh, so True. Many it's a lot of people out here doing that. True. People, you know what? And we always say this to like, in, on social media, people jump on their high um, soapbox and preach, you know? But yeah, it's always hard line until it's their family member or their close persons. Because if now that you put it that way, I want everybody to think about it like this: say that was your mom, 
would you still be here saying mommy should get the death penalty, death by fire and exactly. squad? Exactly. No, that's that's be exactly. honest. That's be big up yourself, and I appreciate that. Yes, make we go introspective yeah, and think. A true man. Of course. All right. Yeah, man. All right. Have a good rest of your day. Bless up everybody. All right, manners and respect here. Yeah? Yes. All right, mm -hmm. live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Morning, SoFlo. So everybody is saying no. If it was your mom, you still wouldn't say. You still would say she needs. She should get the firing squad. Really? I don't think oh, you would. It is right. Huh? If I'm honest, yeah. If I'm honest, I don't think she should get the firing squad. Right, but you know that is the rule of the country. You yeah. Know? And I did. I did call him before, and I said she should get. She should get whatever she's dealt. But right. Upon thinking on it, I thought to myself, you know what? In all the other countries like England, um, US, Nobody is Jamaica, if you got caught with squad. that, right. you would probably get between seven and 15 years. Right. But at the end of the day, like I said before, she knew what the, um, the penalties were if she got caught in that country. Our our opinion our opinion is not gonna change what it is for her. I just wanted to like gauge the audience and see if there was some sympathy out there for her or some outrage towards her condition uh, or if people I'm are just like, eh, it ain't that serious. Because she knew what she was doing. There's people right. in America that 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 get first crime or first offense and they get in life imprisonment and it's something that's something so very silly and they're people that look like me and you true true so you know i have to sort of wait up and think well you know what she knew better she's been in a job where she works against those things so why would she go and take up herself and go and put herself in that position right it's greed it's greed and she just wanted to make a lot of money hmm why all right i appreciate you thank you all right thanks Ah, <sighs> well, here was she knew what she was doing, right? But I still feel compassion, says Brummel Wright. Yeah, we got to put ourselves in other people's shoes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's be honest. I see somebody said, who said that? I agree with that life in prison statement, says one fresh meds, Walton. Julie Tapper says 100%. Uh, Audrey Wright says, Adat me asetokala, meaning if it was your mummy, would you? still be saying, well, she deserved what she got and she just have to go deal with it. Or would you be like, oh my God, you're going to kill my mom just for selling drugs or for smuggling drugs or whatever. Crystal, Crystal G says, my auntie would never. You don't know that. You don't know that. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning, fam. Manas Flo. Manas family. Plus, plus, but yeah. Big up yourself. Well, go on. Well, you see this thing with Ian Bedeen, so we do, man. Mm. It's tough, you know. It's tough. But here, yeah, back when I was with your ball in the young days, and man, get some contract. Mm. Certain places, man, turn down money for going up. See? Man, get contract for go right there, so Indonesia. And turn down the contract. Thailand. Certain places, no, sir. You can't go to the camp on Ganja. Hmm. Send me in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Not real time. Right, you're going to light up and, and split them and kill you, right? <laughs> no, Mexico, me had a play and a play for one team where you run by the cartel. So, so you go. Audrey Wright said me would have begged anybody, even yeah. the Pope, to save our... <laughs> if you have yeah, to. Man, yeah. It's sticky panel, you know. It's rough. Yeah. It's rough. And, and you know them not playing. I bred you went to, um, we call it, Kita. Mm -hmm. We play. Kata. We didn't want the man come back home. Couldn't deal with it. No, sir. Money mean good, man. Said boy. Nah, man. I can't do that, man. I can't drink. This will put up in there and say you can't even look in their women's direction. Like yeah. if you're over there, cat call a woman where you see where you feel like or hey, big no, problems. Well, big man say he pull out a shop within a month, the man back home dread. And matter of fact, me and he and I come go to Mexico to play. Frost Kids 007, big up yourself, fam. Um, I appreciate sure. that. Yeah, yeah, prosper me. I hear you. Um, and the same robot thing, then they mm -hmm. I think I see something from the news that is supposed to start that thing up at um, San Francisco. Out, yeah, yeah, somebody linked me from LA I yesterday and said they have either. them out there already. 
Yes, you know Yeah, but they're not yes. widespread, but they have them out yeah. there already. They won't put them down in the south center because them bad boy with bus fire and them just like the helicopter them, okay? Mm. <laughs> That's we, what them bad boys think. We will see. Let's so, talk about all right. So our 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 best wishes goes with the big up yourself, Prosper. Thank you for yeah, calling. Man, man, right? up, man, man, man has family. Man the show, man. Big up people. All right, we'll take one more call upon that topic and then we're gonna go on to our next topic. All right, so live hello, live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Yeah, me again. Yeah, family. Talk to him. Can we talk about the robot? Yes. We're, that's where we're at now. Yes. All right. All right. Turn down the, what, whatever I'm playing on. Turn that down for us, please. Uh, All okay, right. hold on. Yeah, boy. Um, Stash said, once you're moving drugs around, you're one brave person. Feel it for the lady still. Nowadays, everybody wants yeah, to get here. rich quick. Come if you tell you. Hello. Yes. Loud and clear. Yeah. Go ahead. You got the yeah. floor. Okay, I'm not disrespecting the last caller, but the robot. Mm. But you might hear that. What do you mean? Say a thing. What do you, you, you have to say to us about the robot? Those robots is for the, the um the poor people in in cities in New York or California. Okay, so so since this. since you're gonna talk, hold on. Since you're gonna talk about the robot, let me get everybody on one page so everybody is rolling together. So a few days ago, the mayor of New York City had held a press conference where they came out and he came out and said that starting this June. The subways and 42nd Street will be patrolled by robots. Meet the three robots, and it's three different robots that look different from each other. One looks like a big bullet that has the word police on it. There's another, I've seen it. There's another one that's a bit smaller than that. And then there's that dog that everybody is afraid mm -hmm. of. And if you see the dog move and you've watched mm -hmm. the movie, um, Terminator, the Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's exactly how it. it, it you, you seen the dog move, fam? Yeah. Listen, I I been seeing those robots since 2014 on YouTube. They're right. developing them. Right, and now they're now, ready to be unleashed. Now, those, now, now you those, think you think you think this is this is where the conversation is going. You're right. saying, along with a bunch of other people. That 42nd Street, Times Square, the subway is a start. Mm -hmm. Eventually, these robots will make their way into communities where it's predominantly black and brown. And it'll be used against us. Yes, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Those are the start in the midst of the, the cities. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, it's going to be more, and it's going to be in the hood, poor areas. And they're going to... They gonna, um, they gonna just um, mess up the, um, the the young hood dudes, the poor people that are out, out there. Them robots are going to destroy those people. Hmm. These elite people, the government people, don't care about poor people. They and they will do that. They will destroy everything. This right now in China, they have them AIs in China. Those um. We call them robots in McDonald's in China and mm -hmm. everywhere else. And when you go jaywalking and those 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 um jaywalking, you if they'll they'll scan your face. Right. And then they'll see that so, you did that. Okay, so let, like, let me explain it. Let me explain it because I have a little understanding of that. Um, the features, one of the features is this. They were using it during, say, Corona or COVID, right? And mm -hmm. so the robot would be outside. And if the robot, if you're on, if you are on the list of people that are infected, you weren't mm -hmm. allowed to leave your apartment. You had to be quarantined. When that robot scans the crowd, that, mm -hmm. that robot was trained to actually, if you are one of them that have left your apartment and you're supposed to be under quarantine because you did mm -hmm. test positive, the robot mm -hmm. would alert the authorities um, and lock on to you and alert the authorities and they would come pick you up. So mm -hmm. there, there are things about it. Now, the ones that they're going to be using in New York, one of the features I found pretty interesting was if a car, for instance, is used or a bike is used in a commission of a crime, right? 
once they lock onto it from satellite or whatever, the robot will have the capability of chasing it and shooting a GPS device that will be embedded into that vehicle. So no matter where you go with it, you will be trapped. Like Yo, self flow. <laughs> yeah. We're doomed. <laughs> we're doomed. So to me, the it's like sci-fi come comes to reality, world. right? Yeah, it's 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 reality. The robot I, AI world is called New World Order. They gonna control every damn thing. Hmm. So we, I mean, we're gonna have to be prepared and do a lot of solutions and this just don't get in trouble. Point blank. Yeah. Don't get in no trouble. Just love your families, love your loved ones. But these are the, the times now. Mm. Things are changing. Yeah. Things are changing. Yeah, things are changing rapidly. Mm. So everything is everything is gonna be like this now. Yeah, I agree. So I, the, I, all right, I'm, 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 I'm gonna dig deeper into it after we hang up. But manners and respect. Yeah, dig deep on it. I will. Because they got them listening so flow. Mm -hmm. They got those other robots that flip. Mm -hmm. shoot, they go to the um the them army places, them robots. I've seen come them. Back. I've seen them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen those, them. Those those will come out. Watch. Those are for combat. Yeah, but they will come in the cities too yeah. in America. Yeah. You think them dog I'm, robots? I'm gonna talk come more on, about man. it. I'm gonna talk more about it in a minute. So thank <laughs> okay. you. All right. All right. All right. Manas. Manas fam. All right. Let's slow down the calls for a minute, right? And let's talk about these robots and talk about the fact that they could end up in predominantly black and brown communities or minority communities, so to speak. So we can talk about when somebody gets killed. Now it's not going to be, oh, we have to take these police officers to court and did they get off or are they going to lose their careers and be fired because they were wrong? What's going to happen now, what's going to happen now is, ah, uh, it was the robot, right? So how do you get justice for the robot? What, the city is going to cut your family a check if they were wrong? Um, and they could just say, yeah, the, the robot malfunctioned or, you know, the robot handled him that kind of way and broke his neck, but he shouldn't have ran. That kind of stuff. Now, I saw one where they had this robot on the firing line. For those of you who don't know about guns and firing, you get on the firing line, you have a target ahead of you, and you fire your weapon from down there. They had one on the firing line, right? And it, this one looks like a person. It's built like a person. And the, the instructor, the instructor was instructed to fire, and it fired. And almost every bullet, what we call a tight shot group in the military, almost every bullet went about into the same hole. Okay, so it was very precise. And then he grabbed the robot, shook it up, spun it around, spun it around, and let it go. That robot went right back to acquiring target and still hitting the same. And I was like, yo, that's the future right there. Now, if they roll those out into our cities, into our streets, I don't know what to say. And I'm not even talking no black and white and predominantly black communities or anything. I'm talking about human life, period. Humans versus robots. I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking like artificial intelligence starts mimicking itself after it gets to a point. You know, I'm thinking like humans putting so much mind power into creating things that actually destroy. And then imagine these things started, start like put four robots in a room, right? One of them figures out how to rep because that's what it's going to come to. They're trying to eliminate humans from certain job positions. So why not develop a robot that knows how to reprogram all the other robots, like a worker robot, right? So you don't have to spend so much money paying an engineer two hundred and something thousand dollars a year. Let's have this robot, and anytime that one goes bad, we bring it to this robot. Now, when that robot goes rogue, because they now know how to program each other. I don't know. I, that's the part I'm thinking about. But yeah, most people are saying this is going to end up in a black and brown community predominantly, and we're going to feel the brunt of it. So the mayor of New York said, starting June, 
the robot dogs will be in the subways and they will be on the streets and the cop robot will be on the streets as well. Shout out to my New York people. If you see any of them, I've seen some already and I've seen people walking and taking pictures of them. If you see any of them, I don't know what to tell you, but you could take a picture and share it with us. Or maybe if I'm in New York, I'll run into them myself. But now is the time, though. Now is the time to start cleaning up our own communities, really. If they're going to be putting these things in places where, say, crime is high, then how about we stop letting crime be so high in our neighborhoods? Because this is the future. And the future is not going to slow down for us and our feelings, right? This is the future. This is what the future looks like. We are here. I don't know if y'all remember, for those of you who are grown people that are here, you remember the first computers that came out? The first computers that came out, the back of it was like this big, right? And you could barely see stuff on the screen. And video games used to look real crazy, like little alien looking stuff jumping around, jumping around, and you would control them. Look at us now. The whole computer right here. The first computer before that big back computer took up a whole room. The first cell phones. Remember the first big old cell phones? The bricks with the big old antenna and people had to carry a briefcase for a charger. Look at us now. Plug it into your vehicle. Plug it anywhere. Plug and go. Charge up for days. So technology is advancing and that is going to be the way of the world. I know a woman that worked at Walmart for years cleaning. And, you know, I don't judge people. Some people are comfortable where they're at in life. This woman, she, I don't know. You know, some people are like, well, you should have excelled by now. That's a stepping stone. You should have went to school, furthered your education or whatever. I would encourage anybody who is out there now to actually do that. Get some kind of skill. Get something that you know that people will always need, right? That way, when these jobs start going, because I walked into Walmart one day and I saw this thing, just like the police robot that they just showed in New York. And it came right past me in the store. And it spun around like this and just kept going. And I asked the girl, I said, uh, one of the young ladies that work at Walmart, I said, is it going to run me over? And she said, no, it's censored. So it stops when it sees humans. What is it doing? That one's cleaning the floors. I went to another Walmart. This Walmart I actually used to work at. And I saw my boy David, my Haitian friend David. David, shout out to David if he ever watched. But David was in a store. And he's doing his thing, right? And this robot came out. And the robot was facing... The, the shelf and just scanning up and down, up and down, all the way to the one side, all the way down the aisle to the next side. So I asked David, I said, what's that one doing? Because I've seen the ones that clean the floors. David said that one is taking inventory, comes out, scans all everything on the shelf and by the barcodes makes an order list. OK, we're out of Pepsi. Um, it's checking the back stock. It's making a list. We only have two cases left in the back. We have only one on the shelf. We're out. We need to make an order ASAP, blah, blah, blah. It's making a list. Everything that's missing, that's a stalker's job. So these jobs are going. No longer need a human being to be like, go look on the shelf, see how many we have out there. Okay, I'll be back out there. Time on the clock is running. They're paying you by the hour looking you got to write down how many is left on the shelf now okay now go look in the inventory room and see how much we got left back there okay nope that robot knows everything once the robot scan it's programmed to up oh, only two in stock none on the shelf bring an order in asap on to the next um the next thing went from sugar to soda to water to this to that humans can't move that fast and in a business world it's dollars and cents right so a lot of jobs are going to be going live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Oh, good morning, fam. Sorry. Live on the air. Morning. morning. What's up? Yeah. yeah. I, I was watching the TV talking about the robots and stuff. Mm -hmm. But also I go to BJ's and they have the 
the robots in there doing taking stock, doing inventory. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I just saw them in mm -hmm. Walmart. I saw one cleaning mm -hmm. the floors and I saw one doing inventory. Oh, so, yes. so cleaners and, so, and stockers uh -huh. out the door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when we're talking about few. the ones on New York Street, mm -hmm. I personally do not have a problem because I take the train to subway. They will be on the train and subways. Yes. And trust me, so far, you have to be watching your back. Oh, I lived there for years. I okay, know, I know you have and, to and it hasn't changed. Watching your so I have no problem with whatever robot dog, robot whatever they want put out there. I am not a wrong doer. But, me in a business, me go about business. But let me ask you this. Suppose mm. one is attacking you because you're well, mi you're know. mistaken as a wrongdoer then. Can you know police fling down people me all the time? Fight. <laughs> Can you no, know po me and police robot jump on the wrong person all the time, you know? <laughs> so, so <laughs> this ro uh, by the way, this ro I think this robot weighs like seven, is it 700 pounds or something like that. So, good luck throwing mm. it down. Well, I mean, I know. The robot does. Something off. Something off. Something off. Yo, they better keep that robot there from Caribbean people. Listen, me, me, I tell you, I'm going to the robot dog. Something off. Something off. So I'm okay. the name. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Big up. laughs> Watch me Trini Bridget there with the robot. He said, like, yeah, that's going on with you, Dread. Watch now. <laughs> that robot ain't backing down. Once it locks on, that's it. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning, SoFlo. The lady of being tear up. <laughs> she said she had Papa something off. She had Papa <laughs> something off, fine. <laughs> Malfunction, malfunction. Why? Why? My so flow, but I know I know. <laughs> because me know if you have facts, eh? they're going to start turning on human beings. Mm. Yeah, man, they're going to get very educated. They're going to get information from human beings. So you see, they're going to walk, you know. They're going to study everything and they're going to get information while people are talking. <laughs> My daughter, I'm going watch a show with same robot business. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence, what is show name? I'm a husband saying everything that people put out in Hollywood that will come to life. Yes, it's like them soften up the crowd first with the Hollywood yes. movies, then them give you a little couple of years, you know, forget get used to it, them give you a part one and a part two, and you know, and soften we up. And then by the time we look around, we're like, wait, didn't we see this movie in 1980-something or 1990-something? Mm -hmm. And then they hear them, oh, no, I'm glad for the robot. I'm glad. But they don't understand the long run what's going to happen. Well, here it's going to be dangerous to human beings. What are us if, 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 if that movie play out in real life? The, the... No, my, my husband said it to come to life. And when me see you post the something yesterday, I get the notification. Mm -hmm. I said, look, they're rotted. Hmm. The robot, them start to talk to people and kill them. Right. And the Alexa thing start to get things, information, in you know, the show from the little boy. Start to use the little boy's voice to manipulate the parents. Them. Trap the little boy in the room. And I tell him, say, if you're not doing what where she wants, mm -hmm. he's going to kill her. The Alexa do that, lock the door, turn on the light, them, play the music, like she torture the people. Them. Rotted. Cell phone, I turn against people. <laughs> Everything where artificial intelligence I turn against people and I kill them off. You, you know one part was scary. Let me let people be aware of this, right? So I do videos and editing, obviously not to a high standard, but I'll never forget when we see a video one day with President Obama and President Obama got up, gave the speech, and I'm watching him get up, give the speech. But me, I said to myself, say, I've never seen him behave like this publicly and do this. And when he was done giving the speech, the man boxed over the podium like this and said, fuck it. And left, and I was like, when did he do this? 
So I'm looking through to find when did this happen? Somebody was so good at editing. So it dawned on me and I, I said, damn, people can actually take you and put you in places where you've never been and sure. generate a video of you actually doing an activity that you never did in a place you've never been. Because that video was so real, I had to go look to see if it was fake, right? And it was fake. So yeah, we're well, moving into we're moving into dangerous time. You see you on the audience, them. Mm -hmm. Because Muta Baruka talk it Wednesday, and in program, the inner China, one of them robot that kill Chinese. Mm. Yep. Oh yeah, um, th that story was out. Them, it's a couple of them that that got killed. They were working with yeah, the robot. Them, them, then. them did not work with them, and them the robot them turned against them because they were. I mm -hmm. think they were trying to see how much information them can put in at a robot and have them do certain things or whatever. And they locked them in and turned against them, and they shut down you know, the, the whole Chinese facility. Them, I think in maybe twenty or twenty one of them was a good amount of Chinese that killed. Well, we're in those times, my friend. So, me know say Caribbean so, so, people are going to cuss on fire. I'm more dash the smart TV out of my own more and show the Alexa more and show the phone. Sometimes I feel like I just clean out the old. But that's where we live now. This, this is the future. I live on the grid. Yeah, this, but this is where we're at now. We're in the future. We're in the future. You know, they say no, but some African people live on one island. And my husband tell me about them and then we see it on the news. Where, where um you know the one that were beat with ancestors. No, the one where the, them the missionary tried to kill them. The missionary went over there, so he's bringing and them. And then kill them. Uh, yeah. I forgot what their name is, but they So me you need to go live with them people. Eh? Them would have kill you too. Why am I gonna kill them? I'm not black. But that don't mean nothing to them. You're you're not them. From them look on you, them hotel say you're not them. So, <laughs> At least I know them people and I'm not artificial intelligence. I don't know about them something there. Yeah, there was signaling that missionary to not come any closer. They don't speak English, of course, but them did not give the signal to not come any closer. My boy, woohoo, I'm bringing them the word of the Lord and God will protect me. Them full him up a arm. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> them full him up a arrow <laughs> with poisonous <laughs> darts. I feel laugh still, God. Let them go and bring the word of the Lord here yeah. and see if it's going to work for them. It didn't work. Well, but it not work for nobody at all. <laughs> Boy, it not working. Believe, kill and believe, cure here, my friend. So me left people need to stand for you. Me left, me left people to them. Listen, no, sir, me not gonna say that. Me not say all that. You know what me say? Mm -hmm. Meditate. Meditate. You hear what me say? Meditate. Hear what me say? Me say do what works for you. That's what me tell people. Do what works for you. Because if I go tell a man, stop praying and start meditating, and he meditates and it not work for him. Me, I go tell people, do what works for you. That, that, right, that's all. But then get up every day and I pray for crime, stop and crime and get worse. That means it's not working. Because they're not doing the things that are necessary along with the prayers. And we don't know, sir. Prayer alone is not going to do it. You have to pray and move. You have to pray and work. You have to pray and then put things in place. But them does are pray. And all the we things that are supposed to be in place, not in place. I sit down and I meditate on what I want See in it. a life. And then manifest it physically. And I manifest it. And see me here. Yeah. If I'm healing more, I'm going to meditate for healing. See it. Yeah, because the I'm mind is powerful, it. family. The mind is powerful. That's why I said believe. I know Mr. saw the elders say it. Believe kill and believe cure. Right, that's all. All I'm right. I believe that it's Bible business and some what they say. Then just be careful with them robot there. All right. We are going to left that one there right, that's all this morning. <laughs> yeah, man. Big up the wife. Right. Kiss I up will. the kids. And tell his son I said happy birthday. I wish him all the best and many, many more to come. I appreciate you. Thank you. Manners and respect okay. here. Okay. All right, bye. Bye, bye. Yeah, me no, I, I don't, I don't take it a practice to tell people what to believe in. If you want to pray, pray. If prayer, if prayer works for you, it works for you, right? Um, if you meditate and it works for you, it works for you too. These robots, though, live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Yes, SoFlo. Morning. Yes, fam. Good morning.
You're live on the air. Talk to yeah, us. Man, so the, yeah, man. So the thing we explained with Obama, it's called a deep fake. A deep fake? Yeah. Hmm. They use it. They, they can use it to manipulate voices, images, all of that. So and you've seen it? Yeah, man. I've seen it before. Yeah. And they had multiple videos of him like that. That's why I was thinking at first that it was real. But then... You know, somebody said, Soflo, they're not real. It's edited. So I had to go look yeah, it up, man. fact check it. But it was that real that I had to go fact check it. Me watch it with my two eyes and thought that's what he was doing. Oh. So imagine well, when them start putting us in places we've never been, doing things that yeah. we would never do. There's a movie. There's a movie, a dork. <laughs> but it did a whole deep thing. I think... um. I don't know if y'all saw the one where they will install the chip in everybody that's born from birth and then you'll be programmed onto a grid. And um, I think what they're working on is for it to be able to read your thoughts. Right. Nearly. And they said, uh, right. And they said that it, for this will be able to help them to be able to stop crime before they even happen. Okay. So a man sitting at his house thinking, yeah, I'm going to go rob that bank. And then him start plan to rob the bank. His thoughts will already be transmitted to the grid. They look on it and they'll say, okay, this person is thinking criminal thoughts and he's planning on robbing the bank. Go pick him up. Like before yeah, you even um, do it kind of thing. So yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the world looks like, say, 50, 60 years from now. It didn't take us that long to get this far. Gonna be crazy, so please. yeah. Cause just the other day we did have beeper, and <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> no, and now look at us, you know. Yeah. So imagine what the next 25 30 is gonna be. We just have to be prepared. Hmm. Some people say I'll no, be long no, gone. No. Boy, all right, fam. Yeah, man, bless up. Bless up. All right, one more call and we move on to this. Interview by this uh drug mule lady live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, fam. How you doing? Oh, totally blessed, grateful, and uh, I'm amazed that I'm on. Really? So, yeah. I appreciate you calling in. Talk up now and talk to us. What what you got for us? Okay, what I got for us is that I want to talk about the fact that. There's so many options to, to see the whole robot idea from different perspectives. Okay. Um, I, think, I think that uh, the idea of the robot is just uh, a way to take us away from having emotions, feeling emotions, and being emotional uh, about uh, annihilation of people or arresting people. Um, I think that people are... Uh, you know, like you were talking about the woman in Indonesia or wherever she's from who uh, made the mistake of selling drugs to Tony Yeah. And they have a law that says you have to get in front of the firing squad and die immediately. Uh, right. I think that that's turning people into robots and, and not having the ability to um, to think about what you're doing, why you're really doing it, and how to make a change to not do it. Um and uh, to just actually build these um, machines that operate um, without any emotion or reasoning that human beings would get when they were born. Because um, it's very it's hard to train. It it's very hard to train humans. Like Kaita Jai Emperor says, robots cannot be empathetic or sympathetic. So it's very hard to train a human being to be completely none empathetic or none sympathetic humans are naturally right. empathetic and sympathetic even psychopaths are to some degree or when it concerns someone that they have some kind of uh feeling towards or whatever so uh, yeah you're, right. you're 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 right on track those robots won't have any feelings they, they don't know if they're doing wrong or right they'll just do they just do right and and you know um i was talking about well what about the poor people who whose pictures will be taken and any any diabolical employee of any of those agencies could possibly decide that they want to do a Hitler thing. Yep. And uh, they decide they want to wipe out a whole lot of people. 
Yeah. And um and and they get the controls, you know. Yeah. So um that's a really dangerous and, and you know, and I was thinking of ways that that, that we could stop that. And and I, I was thinking that magnetized pain could uh wrap around the sensors on those robots, drones, whatever you want to use as a tool to uh, annihilate people. If they, if it was paint magnetized and sprayed into the air, it would wrap around these things. And, <laughs> that, that would pretty much and block all this. That would be almost impossible sensors. to do. We would be spray painting ourselves too. I give you a little, well, we just, <laughs> we'll just spray and, it up in we, the air and as they come, it wraps around them because they're made of metal. We're right. Not. And, and so that was just a, that was a, I thought, well, if, if I had that idea, then God has put that idea out for lots of other people on the planet. So there are ways to, to block that. What I'm um, sure is this. That, that, I'm sure. What I'm sure is this. I'm pretty sure that they thought of stuff like that uh, during production and trial phase. Like, what can people possibly do? What 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 could a criminal do or people do to stop these robots or to make them not functioning? It's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for two of them. So if you see the okay. city roll out, if you see the city roll out a whole bunch of them, that tells us that they spent hundreds of millions of dollars, right? You think they're gonna do mm -hmm. that for something that we can disarm so simply? I doubt it. I well, doubt it. You know, I well, and part of me thinks that. That, that the possibility it does exist because they really want to take simple and make it look complicated. A true King Biggs. So we're going to uh, go right know, into the other topic soon. <laughs> oh, oh, and, and I just wanted to backtrack on the on the woman who, um, you know, they, they say they're going to kill. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to say that in her defense, anybody that supposedly had been a cop and got busted for for trafficking drugs obviously was mentally ill and you know was you she was probably her best customer so uh you know she should be found incompetent and given a program you know yeah. it, 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 there's so so many crimes that are diabolical on the planet and uh, I don't think that is something worthy You don't think of, that crime fit that squad. kind of a punishment? You don't think she should be no, put before a firing squad? Absolutely not. I think it's a shame that we live in a world where they would even think of such a thing for a human being that made a mistake. You, you know, right. obviously, she was out of her mind. All right. I you appreciate know. that. I appreciate you sharing with us your thoughts. All right. Thank you. All right. Have All a good right. one. Many blessings. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. We, no more calls. No more calls for now. We, let's get into the other topic. Uh, this is our last topic for the morning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No more calls for now. For now. Let's get into the, the last topic of the morning because time is running away and I want to cover all these topics, right? Um, just quickly. Just run through this, and this is just food for thought, and then I'm going to get into this live interview with this lady who was a drug mule out of Jamaica that got caught in the U.S., and she is now planning on suing the U.S. authorities for uh, mistreatment when she was in custody. But I have something to say to that because I think it's a deterrent. Her story is a good deterrent for others of our countrymen. See it? And we're going to end on that one. But before we do that, Jamaica has been ranked, uh, our today Jamaica, Jamaica has been ranked 10th position by the World of Statistics, or WOS, on a list of the most criminal countries in the world. And this was published on Tuesday, April 11th. Venezuela, Jamaica is ranked 10. The, the ranking of the didn't fit right. Venezuela is ranked as number one of the most criminal country, followed by Papua New Guinea, followed by Afghanistan, followed by South Africa, followed by Honduras, followed by Trinidad, followed by Guyana at number seven, Syria eight, and Somalia nine. Where is Mexico on this, by the way? Mexico, they just executed a whole bunch of people down in Mexico and they 
I mean, their murder rate is alarming. So Mexico is not even on the list. I don't even know if I should take this list serious, but people are sending it to me. So Flo, talk about this. Jamaica was also ranked 10 on the world position review, world population review list of countries with the highest crime rate with a crime index of 67.42. Venezuela topped the list once more as the country with the highest crime rate with an index of 83.76. Papua New Guinea is at 80.79. South Africa is at 76.86. Afghanistan is at 76.31. Honduras is at 74.54. Trinidad is at 71.63. Jamaica is at 67.42. Trinidad is at 71.63. I don't know. I, I, am I supposed to believe these statistics or am I getting this wrong or did they get this wrong? Guyana is at 68.74. El Salvador 67.79 and Brazil 67.49. Those are other countries. Qatar ranked the lowest. Qatar is one of those places where you might lose your arm if you steal stuff. Yeah. If you're raped, you're going to get castrated, that kind of stuff. So Qatar has the lowest at 136 with a crime index of 12.13. The WPR says that the overall crime rates calculated by dividing the total number of reported crimes of any kind, any kind, not murder. That's the reason why Jamaica is not. If, it, if they were talking about murder, Jamaica probably would rank higher on the list compared to Trinidad. But they're talking about any crime, period. Breaking and entering, um, domestic issues that don't involve death, so on and so forth. The WPR says the overall crime rate is calculated by dividing the total number of reported crimes of any kind by the total population and then multiplying the results by 100,000 because crime rate is typically reported as X number of crimes per 100,000 people, the standard. Now, while the factors influencing the crime rate for countries may vary in different countries, the influencing factors include poverty levels and unemployment. Those are the two big ones. The WPR also noted that there is also a strong correlation between age and crime, with most crimes, especially most violent crimes, being committed by those between the ages of 20 and 30 years old. Hmm. Kind of fitting if you know science and how the brain develops and all that. You know, some people frontal lobe for not fully developed. Well, humans, it says until you're past 25 years old. Some people develop even later. So it's within that gap, that impulsive thinking like, yo, that boy, if it dead, you know, bam, bam, bam. And then think about it later. Damn, we could have talked that over. But him dead, no, you know. So I don't know. Crimes on a whole, period. Audrey Wright says, Mexico long, no. She never learned the first time. Asarin Odetta says, them flying up about Guyana. Them lying about Guyana. Hmm. And Dorothy T says they obviously forgot Mexico and Colombia. Uh, exactly. This is why I don't know if I should even take this list serious. So since that was on the list, though, we'll run past that real quick this morning. And then we'll get into this lady with her interview. I leave this for last. Because if I get a copyright infringement something, I am going to take this off of the video immediately. So the only people that are seeing this on SoFlow TV are the people that are here to see this now, okay? Our last topic for the morning, tell mommy something. This says, Joy Thorpe, a convicted drug mule and the only female among a group of 37 Jamaicans who were recently deported from the U.S., She's threatening to sue the United States Federal Bureau of Prisons for the inhumane and cruel conditions that she faced behind bars in the U.S. This is not our um, material. This is not our material. This material belongs to, this interview belongs to the Jamaica Gleaner. I'm only using a part of it just so you can hear her line of reasoning and then it will fit into my commentary, right? 
Watch this. You were trafficking cocaine. How long ago was this? What year? I was almost in February 25th, 21. Where were you arrested? At the J.F. Kennedy Airport. In New York? Yes. And how much were you carrying? The Fed said it was half a kilo. And you were found guilty and sent to prison for how long? Two years. Were you in prison in New York? I was in prison in New York for nine, eight months. And the rest I spent in Alabama. When you went to Alabama, you were telling me earlier today that you went under inhumane conditions. Oh, yes. Can you tell me what that means? Food you don't get. The food is like a pig dinner. Yes, your medicine, which I show you, you don't get. Okay, so obviously I'm probably going to be... Uh, then, you know... I'm probably going to be commenting as this goes along, right? The food you don't get. The medicine is like a pig dinner. It's prison. It's prison. What you thought... I don't, I, I don't know if she thought that in the U.S. when you go to prison, that... Somebody told her that, yeah, man, in a prison in the U.S., you get three square meals a day. Yeah, you're going to get three square meals, all right? Three square meals of caca. And she, <laughs> she was waiting for the steak. And she was waiting for the lobster because this is America, right? Because you know how some people's perception of the U.S. is, right? So she, the steak and the lobster never came. And now she's like, food you don't get. The food is like a pig dinner. Um, it was prison, ma'am. Okay. For <laughs> cocaine. Yes. Transportation. Uh, anyhow, yes. Trafficking. You were trafficking cocaine. How long ago was this? What year? I was almost, let me see, it, February 25th. I'll fast forward. 21. Soon. Where were you arrested? At the J.F. Kennedy Airport. In New York? Yes. And how much were you carrying? The Fed said it was half a kilo. Cinnamon toast, cinnamon. And <laughs> you were found guilty and sent to prison for how long? Two years. Were you in prison in New York? I was in prison in New York for nine, eight months. And the rest I spent in Alabama. When you went to Alabama, you were telling me earlier today that... You went under inhumane conditions. Oh, yes. Can you tell me what that means? Food you don't get. The food is like a pig dinner. Yes. Your medicine, which I show you, you don't get. And when I don't get my life-saving medicine, then, you know, it's death coming. But, but what condition did you go into prison with? You said you didn't get your medicine. So Diabetes. What? Okay. Hypertensive. You had high blood pressure and diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes. And you were not given medication whenever you got sick while in prison? Um, when I go for the medicine, sometimes they tell me it's not time yet to get the medicine. And then the medicine you will never get. And it's your life-saving, my life-saving medicine. Do you believe that you were treated based on the fact that you were... Um, Immigrant? Oh, yes. Not me alone. It's a lot of immigrants there. They are feeling the pinch of hell. If I never see hell, but I sure I see hell in Alabama. <laughs> I sure, sure, I sure. I see hell. Oh. Didn't you have any way of making a report to anyone in charge who would be able to help you? Yes, I do. But they are just the same way we can. Trust me. About how many other women were in the same prison that you were in? It's about maybe about 2,000 of us there. And the most of them are immigrants. They feel in hell, I can tell you. There are other Jamaicans that are there. And they also tell me when I go to talk now to you, must tell what I know also about them. Were you given the proper sentence? 
No, my husband got a hearing a day, so I did not. Okay, so you were arrested and your husband yes. was also arrested yes. with you. Yes. Was he carrying the drugs or he was an accomplice? Well, maybe that is why he served less time than you. Is that possible? I don't really know. You know what they're doing, but I know that judge gave me two years. And gave your husband one year? One year and a day. Okay. All right. So. But you're also saying that you believe that your sentencing should have been one year and six months. Where did you get that kind of information from? You want to make up your own the sentence. First in that America, everybody come out on it. There are no in Louisiana where I was waiting to go home. And I went to my case manager and asked my case manager, Mr. What about my first step act? He said, not due to you because you are aliens and all the rest of the aliens gotten there. So what about mine? But why do you think they would have selected you out of all the women in that prison to give you extra time. Not so, me alone. This is what I'm trying to tell you. It's not me alone. They give extra time. When I went to ask about my first step up last year, she said, my case manager said, it's not due to you. Things, you understand? So this was when I got myself in trouble. It wasn't nothing else. Yeah, I wasn't suffering. What about your husband? Though? I'm not hearing much about him. He's an engineer. Is he, is he, um, is he concerned about engineer. the treatment? Did he get the same type of treatment you got? Some of it in, in, in Brooklyn. He got some of it over there in Brooklyn. Some of the treatment. Yeah, but he was okay because he, he came home before and he was looking over me after, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. He made sure. Do you think you would ever make the same error you made? Oh, that can happen to me again. And America can never see me in same territory again. I can tell you that one. Who feels it knows it. And I know that I will treat it inhumane. You I know. You lock up somebody for months. They don't even can come out and walk outside. And they have recreation out there. Yes. Yeah, the sun hot out there, and you call inside yes. like ice. Tell them, please. What, what, uh, maybe, what that is, maybe that's their way of breaking persons. No, they ensuring say ensuring that COVID. you don't come back. No, no, no. They said that it was COVID. Every time they locked down the prison. All In two years, you were able to do all of this. All, all of them. Watch, watch. This is a uh, pull it around so we can see it. Mm -hmm. Lives. Okay, so you were studying the Bible. Yes, that's the only one. And this one, these are from a certificate of a different holder. Listen, listen. It's a Bible. Listen. Anger manager. Listen. Because I got this, because I got this from the gleaner, I chopped up the interview. I chopped out a big piece of it. I only let you hear the first little piece at the beginning. And some of almost to the end. You need to go watch this whole interview from this woman. So go over to the gleaner and watch the proper interview. Okay. It's not my material, it belongs to the gleaner. But what, what I wanted to say is this, and we're gonna end it like this this morning. Okay. First of all, for anybody in the Caribbean who hears this story, because I've heard this before, there was a documentary out not too long ago where this brother said, him smuggle drugs. And that's what he does. And if he gets caught, they ask him, so if you get caught in the U.S., what are you going to do? Because prison is not nice in the U.S. You know what he said? He said, me sure said prison nicer in the U.S. than when me live right now. Because shit, we shit in a bag, you know, and tie the bag and throw it over the wall, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's what the man said. And that's where he was living in Jamaica. He was standing right next to the wall. And he said, on the other side of this wall, because we don't have no... Tile it around you and no running water and them something there. I shit to shit in a bag, you know, and tie the bag so and then fling it over the wall. So they're asking, I'm wondering what's on the other side of the wall if everybody over here shitting it down in bags and throwing it over there. But the man has said that's his condition every day living in Jamaica. So prison in the US is probably going to be nice for him because he's going to get three meals per day and he's going to get somewhere quiet for sleep and all these other things. Let me tell you all something. 
all y'all in all the Caribbean islands, because I get catch enough too, right? They focus on Jamaica because I guess we just go hard at everything that we do and we excel, try to be the best. When Jamaicans are going to be thief, they are the best thief in the world. You know, are we thief your stuff and then help you look for it, you know? And then, and them kind of something there. Very deceptive. Murder you and then come stand up at your funeral and ball harder than anybody else. I'll want to dive down in the grave with you and all that. That's just our MO. That's how we do. But for all of you out there who think that life in prison in the U.S. is good at on any level and is okay on any level, I want you to subtract that out your mind. First of all, she can't sue nobody here, Federal Bureau of Prison in the U.S., for any kind of ill treatment or whatever. Mama, you went through what you went through. You did wrong. First of all, people get caught with half a key, don't normally get no year and two years. Okay? That's first. Somebody said, look at the woman in Indonesia. She's facing a firing squad. So you should be lucky that that's all you got. Oh, someone's supposed to bring me my medication on time. And someone is supposed to, I prison you did that. Someone is supposed to serve our meals on time. And the meal is supposed to look gourmet. But you're serving a meal that looks like slob, like pig food, as she said. That's the point. That's the point. The point is for it to be a deterrent. The point is for you to never want to come back again. The point is for you to never want to experience this again. So you never do what you did before again to end up where you ended up. This is it for you. They won't even look at your mail or whatever charges you claim you're going to bring. So for everybody else who's watching, there's no compensation. You're not going to win anything. You're not going to get not one brown penny. Okay? When you get here, and if you're found with drugs, half a key, 10 keys, how many keys, they will sentence you accordingly. Some of you will have to become snitches in order to get less time. And then you have a different life waiting for you when you get back home. Because you see, the boy them will come up here. Let me tell you all the reality. The boy them will come up here, you see. And then catch them without 10 key, 15 key. And man's looking at like 35 years. You know what he has to do to bargain his time down? This is a policy in the U.S. Same thing for the scammer them. This is a policy in the U.S. Every time they catch somebody, they want the big guy. So if I caught you with 10 keys, I'm trying to figure out what kind of links you have. That have you running off with 10 keys. That means that they must have 100 keys. They're using one to get to the other to get to the other until they get to the person at the top of the pyramid. So most of you are going to have to go tell on somebody anyways. And the way how them slap where people are Jamaica, for those of you who don't know what slap where mean, it mean murder. For the way how them slap where people in Jamaica, after you do your little prison time in the U.S., you're going to have to find somewhere else to live or live in Jamaica paranoid as hell. Because somebody... Is coming back to make you pay after you're done snitch them out and U.S. authorities come down to Jamaica and handcuff them. You ever see them with the pretty silver bangle and the, the leg um, ornaments and stuff and how they're shuffling through the airport heading to America? Some of them never been to the U.S. Oh, this part. They fly you to a place called South Dakota and they do those transitions during winter time. During winter time. So you're coming out of tropical, beautiful Jamaica where it's 85 degrees all year round, 95 and 105 in the summertime with some cool sea breeze. You're going into freezing weather. And you heard that woman tell you just now, right? It's hot outside, but they're freezing you up inside because they turn up the AC bucket and you'll be in that building freezing. You're not seeing no summer. So if that's what you want for yourself, then by all means, go ahead, transport your drugs, do your little scamming thing, do whatever you feel like you need to do. But when the consequences come around and hit you, please don't think you're going to sue Federal Prison Bureau and get anything because you're not getting a damn thing. We're going to take one last phone call for the morning and we are out of here. All right. Let this person say what they have to say because they're persistent. Live on the air with SoFlo, you are our last call for the morning. Yes, yeah, so I'm not good. Good morning. Good morning, family. How yes. are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm listening to this um story about this grandmother with the drugs and what have you. Mm -hmm. You know, so far, I was watching something on YouTube on my phone. Yesterday morning, I saw it, where this woman came to the U.S. She was caught with drugs um, at the airport. 
and her husband. Okay. Yeah. She said she got two years. Her husband got. That's the that's one the year. that's the one we just got finished watching some of, and I'm telling the people to go watch all of it over at the Gleaner mm -hmm. because they conducted <laughs> the interview. <laughs> yes, and this woman full of attitude. Now she's gonna sue the the, 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 the U.S. government because how oh, they treat her in prison. <laughs> yeah. They didn't give her the right food. Mm -hmm. They didn't give her medication and time. time. She lost thirty pounds. She was two hundred and sixty pounds. And she could have she could have stand losing the thirty. You know, so in a sense, if something good happened. Yeah. Exactly. Can, yeah. Can but she... you're wrong. When you're wrong, you're wrong. Oh, you wanna take wrong and be right? Just come and you say bring you're wrong. drugs into the people's country. <laughs> there you go. So, she yeah. need to she, she need to see this. Yeah. And I hope she does. And I know she will. That's why I'm yes. do it. That's why yes. I did it. So big up yes. to her. I don't I don't mean no disrespect to your mommy. No. I'm just telling you as, as it is. All right? Yes. Yeah, big up yourself. Yes. All right? Big up yourself. The self -love. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. God bless. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to the woman who did the video. I mean, I want to watch the video and be like, oh, who this idiot boy? Because she just come out of prison. She might not know us. But oh, who this idiot boy? <laughs> Show up the image and thing. Um... That is what it is. You're not gonna get a thing. You can forget the suing part. Just don't transport drugs to the US. As a matter of fact, I don't I don't think you can go back into the US after that. So yeah, we won't be seeing you again. <laughs> All right. With that said, big up on yourself, manners and respect to each and every one of you. And I'm telling you again right now, please go over to the, to the gleaner and go watch the whole interview. There's things in there that's going to make you laugh till your belly hurt. All right. Catch you tomorrow morning. Right, Yasso? God spare my life. Peace and blessings. Peace.